everyone and welcome to the live today. Today we're going to be going through cells and we're going to do a mixture of things from exam questions to some short answer questions as well. And in fact, I'm actually going to start on that looking at can we label this cell? So here we have an animal cell, eukaryotic cell. I'm going to zoom in a bit because I don't know how clearly you can see this at the moment. So let's just zoom. We need to label these different structures. So this first one is pointing to this top layer here. So let me just add in then. So if it's the outer membrane and it's an animal cell, I say outer membrane, it's the most outer layer, that must mean then that it is a cell membrane. The vacuole has been labeled, but can I just point out, because this picture often confuses people, because this is an animal cell, but it's got a vacuole. Animal cells, can have temporary vacuoles, such as the um, phagocyte has a temporary vacuole when it forms that phagosome, but only plant cells have permanent vacuoles. So that is a bit of a misleading label on this picture, but just to explain that. And then we've got to label this structure here. So we can see we've got what looks like folded membranes with circles on the outside. Those circles are ribosomes and the folded membranes make up our rough endoplasmic reticulum. I'm just gonna write RER because I'm going for shorthand here, um, just to make it a little bit easier basically for me at the moment. So then we've got, oh, this one here, this next one is the Golgi apparatus, or as people say to me, it looks like a Wi-Fi symbol, which I totally see it now. Golgi apparatus. Um, okay, then this one, oh, nice easy one over here. We've got this one labeling into the cytoplasm. And then um, we've got these little circles over here. Um, now, the reason that one's been left unlabeled, because sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between the lysosome and these smaller circles, but lysosomes are actually bigger than this organelle here. This is the smallest one that you learn, and that is the ribosome. Next then is this label pointing at this structure where we have these folded membranes, but they don't have any ribosomes on the outside, so that would be our smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or the SER. Last label we have, probably my favorite organelle, this one. What's your favorite organelle? Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite organelle? But this one's gotta be my one. The mitochondria, probably because I love the chemistry in respiration, it's such a good topic. I love biochemistry. So that is our mitochondria mitochondria there we go there is our first bit of revision done labeling that animal cell so let's move straight on and have a go at we've labeled cells now the only bits i'm going to label on this one are the parts that are different because otherwise it's just repeating what we've already done and we've got limited time that we're gonna be working together this evening. So we've got the plasma membrane already labeled and this time it's shown in yellow. So that means the outermost layer, this is a plant cell, so that is the cell wall. And I'm gonna add in a bit more detail, cellulose. Cellulose cell wall. Then here, I do actually also love this organelle, the chloroplast, what a great organelle. Maybe even better than the mitochondria actually, because the chloroplast, it's got pigment in, that's even better. It can actually convert light energy into chemical energy, which blows my mind, that's so cool. Okay, here we have the vacuole, and I know that because the label around the outside of it is a tonoplast, and that's what you call the membrane around the vacuole. Um, and then quickly whiz through these. That looks like it's the mitochondria. We've got our cytoplasm again. Those look like Golgi vesicles because it's coming off the Golgi apparatus. That looks like the rough endoplasmic reticulum on the outside of the nucleus. And then we've got our nucleolus, nuclear envelope, nuclear pore. Um, those are ribosomes on the outside, and that's a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Just in case you were wondering. Now, I'm going to move on to some exam questions so let's have a look at these exam questions next we've got to compare and contrast the structures of chloroplasts and mitochondria oh my two favorite organelles this question is made for me so we are 
Comparing, which means similarities. Contrasting means differences. And we're focusing on chloroplasts and mitochondria. So basically, we need a list of similarities and differences between the two. And you need to make sure you've got comparative points and you can bullet point your answers. So I'm definitely going to be doing that because it makes it easier, it's more concise, and it's easier to check your answer and check you've got at least four points. So I'm going to start with similarities. And I'm going to make it as obvious as literally saying that. And because it's four marks in total, I'm going to come up with two similarities and two differences. Um, and also, I should actually underline, it's the structures we're comparing, not the function or anything like that. So we have to compare the structure of these two um, organelles. So first of all, similarities. They both have two membranes, double membrane bound. That is my first point. They both also contain their own DNA and their own ribosomes, which codes for the enzymes and proteins involved in their reactions. So let's say they both contain DNA. I'm actually going to go for a third one because I said the ribosomes as well. So there we go. Both of them contain ribosomes. Now we need some differences. And whenever you are asked to do two things, so compare which is similarities and contrast the differences, if it's four marks, that means you have to have at least one from both sides of this to get the full marks. So differences then, if we think about the organelles, so this one's going to be my, my mitochondria, there's the outer membrane, and here's my folded inner membrane to make the Christi. And the chloroplast, the double membranes are actually both outside like this. And then you have extra membranes, those thylakoid membranes, making those stacks, which are the grana. But what they both have in the middle is a fluid-filled center. And the fluid-filled center on both of them is called something different. The fluid-filled center is a matrix in the mitochondria and it's the stroma in the chloroplast. So that's what uh, I'm going to put as one of the differences. Now, technically, I have got four bullet points. So that is enough for these four marks. But I'm actually going to continue and give at least one more because it's always worth giving more bullet points than it's worth to cover your back. Unless they literally said only give three on each side. If they literally tell you how many to give in the question, don't give more. Because then if you give an incorrect one, it could cancel out a correct mark. But if they don't say that, then you can give extra. That's actually called the list rule. And I posted about that on TikTok earlier today. So if you want to know more about it, just head over to my TikTok later and you can see that. Okay, then the next thing that's different is... These foldings are called Christi, whereas these foldings are called the Grana. So that's the next difference I'm going to say. Right, so those are the ones I'm going to go for, just in case anyone was answering or was watching this afterwards and they want to check. Others that they accepted were that the chloroplast contains pigment, whereas mitochondria don't. Also, you have starch grains in a chloroplast. You don't have starch grains in the mitochondria. All right, then we have to describe the differences between an optical and transmission microscope and include the limitations. This actually takes me back to the active recall workbook that I've got because this is where I've summarized some of these points. So it will help us with the exam question. We haven't actually completed this yet, but we've got our optical microscope versus our electron microscope. But where this helps us is I've got the different features to compare. So that's what we could include within our answer. So we've got what creates the image. We've got a beam of light, an electron microscope. It would be beam of electrons. All right, beam there. Beam. Then we've got what condenses that beam to a fine point to create the image. That's electromagnets condenses the beam of electrons. In the optical microscope, we have a glass lens. Resolution, we've got poor resolution, whereas this one um, has got a much higher resolution. So we could have 
that point there also thinking about the resolution of those two microscopes so for this one we'll say high resolution magnification again just to be quick because we're going to do it in the exam question i'm going to say lower higher color image or not yes no i mean you can photoshop it afterwards we just get black and white types of samples you can view living samples these ones non-living because it has to be in a vacuum so that air doesn't absorb the electrons okay so that's just a little refresh on that we'll go back to the exam question six marks so describe let's just point out all the key information so describe the differences and it is between an optical microscope and a transmission electron microscope and not only that we have to include the limitations so it's six marks. So we're going to have to start listing some differences between them. And then we need to think about limitations also. So differences and then limitations. First thing that we had on that summary table, if we have a look, it was about what creates the image. So let's put that down as one of our points. We'll have TEM uses electrons, optical uses light. There we go. We also then had, what was our next one? What condenses it? So um, we could have that as another point. So TEM, electromagnets, condensed beam, optical glass lens, condenses beam. We also had about the resolution. So TEM has a higher resolution. We also said that the TEM has a higher magnification. Okay, I've got four, I need six. Oh, actually, it's probably the limitations, isn't it? But let's just double check. We've done what creates it, what condenses, resolution, magnification. Right, these will now be some limitations because we've got one of them can only produce it in black and white. One of them will have only non-living samples. So, and includes limitations. TEM does not show colour. I'm still going to do the comparison though. Optical does. We also had TEM has to have non-living, what could be dead samples. Optical can be living. Okay, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, that'd be six marks. But some others, because I can see a lot of you are contributing in the chat, which is awesome. It's really good to test your knowledge on these exam questions. So you could also have that the TEM, because it's the transmission electron microscope, which means the beam of electrons passes through the specimen, it transmits through. It has to be a really thin slice of the specimen in order for the electrons to pass through. So we could have had that as a comparison. TEM requires a much thinner specimen compared to the optical. TEM is much more complex and time consuming to use. Next then, let's have a look at on prokaryotic cells and viruses. So let's have a look at this bit. So we've got to state five key differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So state five key differences between prokaryotic. So I'm gonna say prokaryotic is smaller. Next, I'm going to say prokaryotic has no membrane bound organelles. Smaller ribosomes, 70S, whereas you have 80S in the eukaryotic cells. You do actually also have 70S inside of the chloroplast and mitochondria in eukaryotic cells, but just within the cytoplasm, it's 80S. I'm going to say no nucleus in prokaryotic, and they do have a cell wall as do plant cells and fungi, which are both eukaryotic, but the cell wall, and this is where it differs, for example, for AQA, we'd say murine, for OCR, I think you have to call it a peptidoglycan to get the mark. So next is naming three additional organelles that only some prokaryotic organisms have. So there are three, well, it was actually more than three, but there are at least three that you need to know that are organelles that you only have in some prokaryotic organisms. So that includes 
the um, flagella, flagellum, which is like the motorized tail for movement. Then we could also have the capsule, not to be confused with the capsid, which is found in viruses. The capsule is the slime layer that you have on the outside of the cell wall, which helps prevent desiccation, which means drying out, but also helps to hide antigens, so to evade the host cell's immune system. And then lastly, plasmid. They do actually also sometimes have pili, which are, um, they look a bit like flagella, but shorter, and that's how they can exchange plasmids between different bacteria, but that's not on the AQA spec. Right, let's finish then with this fill in the gaps. Get into the chat, everyone. Let's have a go. So viruses are non-something and acellular. Living, it's a non-living and it's acellular. They are even something than bacteria. Yes, it is smaller. They're even smaller than bacteria and they only contain genetic material a something and an something something. So there's only three structures that all viruses have is the capsid. And this one is the attachment proteins. That's what the two word was. So this is, you might've seen a post I did on Instagram and TikTok. This is one of the biggest mistakes that is seen in exams when it's questions linked to this, confusing the capsule and the capsid. So the capsule is on bacteria, it's that slime layer on the outside, and the capsid is the protein coat that surrounds the genetic material in a virus. HIV is surrounded by a further lipid envelope that has something, something on the outside. Okay, so this one is actually, it's also those attachment proteins. Attachment, that's what that says if you can't read it. Proteins. Okay, there we go then. That takes us to the end of the questions today that we did. The exam style questions, active recall workbook. If you do find this sort of thing helpful, the active recall workbook, just see how you can actually test your knowledge before you go on to exam questions, but also seeing how doing it did link to helping you structure some of those long answer questions, then head over to missestrick.co.uk and you'll be able to find my active recall workbook there. If you have any requests of what you'd like me to go through, then let me know, either like I said, email or send me a message and I will take a look. But for now, that is it for this evening. Hope you found it helpful and I will hopefully see you next week, everyone. But for now, I'm gonna end it there. <laughs>